IR signal characteristics. Wave number, arguably the most important characteristic of any signal. Wave number depends on the strength of the bond and the mass difference of the atoms that are bonded together. You can think of the bond strength as being like a spring constant. And here is an equation. Nu tilde, or wave number, equals this constant, 1 over 2 pi c, where c is the speed of light in centimeters per second, times this quotient. F is the bond strength. The stronger the bond, the larger the value of F. M red is the reduced mass. So looking at this equation, F is bond strength and it's in the numerator. That means a stronger bond gives you a higher wave number. Reduced mass is in the denominator. The greater the value of reduced mass, the lower your wave number. How is reduced mass calculated? M red equals M1 times M2 over M1 plus M2, where these represent the masses of the atoms that are vibrating, that are stretching from each other. Right, so you've got atom 1 bonded to atom 2, and they're stretching. Here are some different bonds with their characteristic stretching frequencies in wave numbers. And uh, we can use this to illustrate the way um, bond strength affects wave number and the way reduced mass affects wave number. So consider the CH bond and the CD bond. D represents deuterium, which is just hydrogen with a neutron in the nucleus in addition to a proton. And this is hydrogen 1, which we consider protium, which just has a proton in the nucleus. Look at their two different wave numbers. So CH has a wave number of 3000, and CD has a wave number of 2200. Now, we can assume that the bond strength between these two is equal, right? So F for CH equals F for CD, because they're both bonds between carbon and hydrogen. So electronically, they're identical. However, the reduced mass is different, right? So if we calculate the reduced mass for each bond, for CH, we've got 12 times 1 over 12 plus 1. So the mass of a deuterium is 2. So the reduced mass here is 12 times 2 over 12 plus 2. Which is 1.7. So CD has a greater reduced mass than CH. And remember, wave number is inversely proportional to reduced mass. So it makes perfect sense that CD is at 2200 and CH is at 3000. And you can try this for the CO and the CCL bonds as well. What would you predict for a CBR bond? Looking at bonds between carbon and nitrogen, we can see the effect of F. We know that there is a greater bond strength, the greater the bond order. So, 
a triple bond will have the largest F, and a single bond will have the smallest F. And since wave number is directly proportional to F, it makes sense that the strongest bond, CN triple bond, has the highest wave number, and the weakest bond, CN single bond, has the lowest wave number. Based on the effects of the force constant and the reduced mass, we know what wave number region in the spectrum is going to have each type of bond. Single bonds that aren't to hydrogen, well, they have a small f and a large reduced mass, and thus they show up at low wave number. Double bonds have a larger F and the same reduced mass, so you get a larger wave number, and triple bonds have the largest F. And again, the same reduced mass, so we see a larger wave number. Double bonds will show up between 1600 and 1800. Triple bonds between 2300 and 2100. And then bonds to H. They don't have a particularly large F, but they have a small reduced mass. So a small denominator means a large wave number or a high wave number. And we see bonds to hydrogen in the region above 2700 wave numbers. The region of the spectrum that we are going to pay most attention to is the diagnostic region, that is, everything at 1500 wave numbers and higher. Learning how to decode the fingerprint region is much more difficult and beyond the scope of this class. But if you get good at interpreting things in the diagnostic region, you'll be in good shape. Here are the IR spectra of two different alcohols. We've got 2-butanol and isopropanol. So the first thing we want to do is draw a line at 1500 wave numbers vertically. To the left, at 1500 wave numbers is the diagnostic region. To the right is the fingerprint region. So if we look in the diagnostic region for each spectrum, we see two big peaks. This broad intense peak, centered at about 3400, is characteristic of an alcohol. And we see that in both. And then this collection of peaks, a bunch of sharp peaks overlaid, these are sp3ch stretches. So at this level, what we can tell is that both of these are alcohols. And we can also tell some things by what's not there. There are no CC double bonds, for instance. Now, how did I know that the hybridization of the C was sp3? Well, a bond between hydrogen and an sp3 orbital is weakest. It'll have the lowest forced constant, whereas with an sp hybridized orbital, it's strongest. So that will have the highest force constant with an sp2 being intermediate. This means that you'll see the sp3c stretches at around 2900 to 3000 wave numbers. The sp2 stretches will be sharp and they'll be at 3100 wave numbers. This is a carbon hydrogen bond in an alkene, right? And this stretch You'll see at 3300 wave numbers, it'll be very sharp, and you only see this in a terminal alkyne. This means it's also a good idea to draw a line at 3000 wave numbers on your graph, a vertical line. 
Bands just to the right of it are sp3ch stretches. If, however, you have a sharp band to the left at about 3100 wave numbers, that's an sp2ch. You'll see that in an alkene that is not tetrasubstituted. However, a tetrasubstituted alkene will not have this. And if you see this sharp band at 3100, that, my friends, is from a terminal alkyne. However, you will not see this in an internal alkyne. Resonance changes your observed frequency. If you have a conjugated system, there will be more resonance structures, which, um, well, there are more resonance structures where you've got a single bond. That lowers the frequency. Let me illustrate. For a regular ketone that is not conjugated, there is only a small amount of single bond character because there's only one resonance structure that has a single bond. The conjugated ketone contains that resonance pattern of a pi bond between two atoms of different electronegativity, but it also contains an allylic carbocation. So it has a second resonance structure where the CO bond is single. What does that do? Having two resonance structures with a CO single bond puts more single bond character in the resonance hybrid. And the consequence of having more single bond character is a lower force constant and hence a lower wave number.